So I don't really know a lot about his, let's say, at home person. It is a game, though. So I at know. home and not inside the house seem like two completely different things. But anyway, Neil, what's up? Why would I be trying to talk to my family? I knew who, you probably don't know how I'm anyway. I tried to step in. And, so I just reasoned, I said, okay, maybe not a girl, you know, they don't. So I just said, okay, no, I'll well, make I just hands up again. <laughs> Juriel. Okay, guys, I'm just trying to control myself right now. The eviction jury really pissed me off tonight, yes. And this is not me even talking about the fact that they voted out Uriel from the bottom two. No, I am talking about the brief conversation that they had before they casted their votes, yes. Now, I'm not going to dwell too much on it on this video because um, it's going to make this video too lengthy. I probably have to make another video to share my thoughts about it because there's a lot more that I want to say, all right? But um, the focus of this video is going to be on the details of the events of tonight's live eviction show um frankly speaking i was really hoping that at least two persons would be evicted tonight because just as kid wire and um cross had been complaining to big brother the house is too congested yes i think i personally have had my own feel of seeing too many people in the house and i think it's time for them to start going back to where everybody came from yes yes but aside that um there was also because questions to some of the housemates and talking about venita um white money and there was also new and guys the dynamics of that situation was quite interesting and i will be analyzing that situation to all of you on this particular episode of frankly speaking with gloria elijah so please make sure you watch to the end all right um do not skip all right do not skip this video watch to the end so that you do not miss out on any part and um question of this video what do you think about the eviction jury's decision to evict uriel from the show just share with me your thoughts all right and also what was your highlight from Ebuka's interaction with the housemates. Guys, I will tell you my highlights, all right? So you have to watch to the end of this video. And um, special greetings, special welcome to every single one of you. You are specially welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Gloria Elijah. This is Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah, and I am the girl with the tea. If you are yet to become a part of this community officially, please do not hesitate to do exactly what you see on your screen, all right? That is one of the fastest ways for you to receive a lot of my videos whenever I upload a new one please go ahead like this video share this video and yes let's get into the details so Erica started his interaction with um, the housemates tonight by you know first as usual congratulating EK on emerging the head of house of the week and of course you know talking about how <laughs> EK literally instigated most of the chaos that happened in the house EK of course could not deny it and then he had gone ahead to ask about the estranged relationship um, between EK and Vanita yes. and how his relationship with Vanita had gone from being very strong pals to actually falling apart guys we had an entire live session having this conversation on saturday we talked about all of that yes and um he had questioned ike about it all and guys ike actually played safe with his response because we know ike ike would you know rather just go behind the corners or sometimes go straight up but when it comes to venita he knows that it would be better for him to go through the corners. And so he had decided to plead the fifth in this particular one. He had just said, well, he feels like it was just lack of good communication between him and Venita. And yes, it was very glaring that he was avoiding the question. Ebuka's interaction with white money had been about CC. You know, he had asked about how their relationship went from him asking CC for a relationship in the house to him telling Cross and some of the other housemates not to talk to CC except during task. Now, White Money looked shocked, especially about the shipping part, because for him, he has never asked CC to be in a relationship with him because CC had actually informed some of them in the house that she had a boyfriend outside the show, right? Um, but with regards to the other part, he had felt disrespected, you know, from some of the communications that they had had, and um, she would, you know, be too hasty into becoming disrespectful towards him, and so he could not deal with that sort of disrespect anymore. And then he had decided that he wasn't going to talk to her anymore. Now, guys, 
I listened to what he said and I'm like, okay, fine. It makes sense if you want to, you know, create that space between both of you to avoid further disrespect. But why do you have to go ahead to try to instigate people, you know, against her to isolate her? Doesn't really make sense. Guys, what do you make of that? I remember putting out a video about that yesterday and I talked about it and I kind of queried Cece's disrespect towards most of the people in the house. Yes. Although she explained herself, but I thought, you know, telling mean jokes it does not make you funny it only makes you look ridiculous but anyways guys this is not the video to talk about that i already talked about it on one of my videos but you go ahead let me know your thoughts about that the eviction jury was introduced to us so first we had teddy a from the double wahala season and then we had diana from the level up season mon Cherie, big brother's girlfriend <laughs> And the queen of the dairy room for that season, Diana, guys. She was the second member of the eviction jury. And then we had Lacon. Yes, the lockdown season's winner, guys. I was super excited to see the eviction jury. I'm going to be frank with all of you. But then I was quite disappointed by the time it was time for them to carry out their duties. Yes, I was just so disappointed. Hence the reason I said I'm going to have to make another video in a way about it. But the eviction jury was introduced to us and um, guys, as usual, the ninja had actually presented um, the envelope that contained the names of the bottom two. Yes, so there was she and there was Uriel. So as usual, they were required to vote, right? And um, guys, in a way, I don't know, this is like the second time now, I was kind of expecting expecting them to have like a proper conversation about the two names on that envelope. I was expecting them to talk about the strong points and the weak points that each of those housemates, right, were actually, actually had. I was expecting them to talk about the strong points and the weak points, you know, of the two housemates. I was expecting them to talk about, you know, the contribution, the impact of these two individuals on the show and the, the, the necessity for one of them, you know, to stay back in the house whilst the other should leave. I was expecting them to, you know, express a bit of knowledge about the show, about, like, like more like defend their choice. But what I was hearing was quite disappointing, especially from Lecon. I heard Lecon say, oh my God, I'm, I know one of, one of them personally. And I'm like, seriously? So the eviction jury now votes based on their personal emotions or based on what they have seen these housemates give, deliver on the show. Now, aside from Lacon, there was also Diana that looked lost. Diana completely looked like she was lost or like she was in the wrong place, you know, trying to execute the wrong assignment because she was like, I don't even know any of these people. And I'm like, how the hell do you make up the eviction jury without even watching the show? How then do you make your vote? What informs your choice? What informs your decision as one of the ev eviction jury member? It just does not make sense. Now, Teddy was the only person that was very, very confident in who he wanted to vote out of the show. But then his confidence was quite scary because he wasn't necessarily given any valid reason. For him, it just, felt, it just felt like, yes, he knows who to vote out because he believes strongly that the other person deserves to stay more. You know what, guys? Let me just keep quiet because I literally saw Lacan, you know, scribbling Uriel's name and I was just really pissed. I'm not going to dwell too much on it because, I am I mean, guys, let me not just waste your time, but just go ahead and let me know how you felt about that. I mean, by now, you already know that they actually voted out Uriel and it was quite disappointing, although I did not contest their decision. But the reasons behind their choice was really whack. It was really lame. I will shed more light on what I just said on another video. Now, that was how Uriel was evicted from the show. It was quite sad to see her leave, but guys, the game is the game and the show must continue. Now, let's talk about Ebuka's interaction with Venita and New. Ebuka went ahead to question Venita about the fact that she had had a lot to talk about Pere and to that why was it important for her you know to tow that route and ladies and gentlemen i don't know if i've mentioned this before on my channel but as smart as venita is as strategic you know as venita is sometimes when she opens her mouth to explain certain things it's like she's spewing gibberish 
Yes, I mean, frankly speaking, guys, that is what it is. Let's call a spade a spade. Tonight, the explanations that she was giving just felt like she was just going around and around in circles, beating around the bush, talking about, oh, she knows Pere from outside the house. You know, they've worked together professionally. So when she came into the house, she was actually expecting to see the same person. And now what she, she knows of him outside the house is not what she's actually getting in the house. And for her, blah, 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 that's of major concern to her. And when she explained that, I love the fact that Ibuka said, but it's a show though. And she was like, eh, is it, she knows that it's a show. I'm like, somebody please educate Venita that even though you think you know somebody outside the house, do you live with the person in the same house? You know Pere professionally, but were you two married outside the house? Do you people cohabitate? Do you people, are you people a couple outside the house? So what do you mean by, oh, you thought you knew him and now inside the house, you're saying something different. I don't understand. Do you know how he sleeps and wake up? Do you know the color of his pants? Hello, that's if both of you did not shag outside the house. What do you know about Pere that's shocking you right now? Guys, her response was so offensive, frankly speaking. And I love the fact that Ibuka made that statement to her, that it's a game, it's a show. So what was she expecting? And then Ibuka had equally asked Nyu about his reason, you know, for um, getting offended by Adekunle last night. That he had had a lot to say about Adekunle last night, just as much as Adekunle had had a whole lot to say about him the entire week. Ladies and gentlemen, that Ebuka's statement was so balanced because if Ebuka had only talked about the fact that Neil spoke about Adekunle last night, I would have taken it personal. But I love the fact that he had actually mentioned that Adekunle had had a lot to say about Neil the entire week. And ladies and gentlemen, it is true. For the most part of it all, when you listen to Adekunle's conversations with Venita about Neil, you would just, guys, you can literally just see through all of it. like. Is just literally trying to get her to still continue to antagonize her cousin, you know, and only trust him and him alone. And Neil had gone ahead to explain that, well, they had had their fall off in the house and on three occasions they had tried to talk to Venita, but then Avdekunle would always stand as her spokesperson and said, oh, she's not in the mood to speak. And guys, Neil was not lying. I saw that play out the entire week. If I even last week, every time Neil wants to have a conversation with Venita, yes, Venita would curse him out and chase him away. And he had gone ahead to explain that the reason he had actually had that conversation last night was because he felt disrespected that who is Adekunle to be trying to come in between him, you know, and having a conversation with his cousin. That doesn't really make sense. And I agree with you 100% because if, if there's anybody that's been going around trying to antagonize another person, it is definitely Venita. Yes, and we understand that it's all for the game, but she has been the villain all along. Now, whilst Nyo was speaking, Adekile was, you know, covering her mouth like this so that she would not talk. Guys, frankly speaking, I was just really disgusted by that mere act. Because I put out a tweet and I'm like, oh wow, all of a sudden, Adekule is now feeling like somebody's husband. Really? You know what, guys? I'm not gonna say too much anymore. More videos will come where I will share my sentiments about this whole matter, all right? But please go ahead, let me know your thoughts about all the issues I have raised on this video. And I'll see you guys on another episode of Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah. Have a good night. Bye.